Cool. Let's get into it, guys. Welcome to the Quick Start webinar. This is week 23. Every single Thursday at 1 o'clock Eastern Time, we practice private money lending fundamentals. We practice elevator pitches. You name it. We go through some case studies. We give some examples. We just try to educate ourselves and stay sharp around the topic of private money lending. Private Money Club, you guys know Private Money Club. It's an amazing platform. We got borrowers. We got lenders. But, you know, last thing we want is for this to be like a high school dance and like nobody's dancing with each other. You know, there's no wallflowers here, right? Like, let's let's get off the wall. Let's have some conversations. Let's present deals. Let's talk about deals. I hope you're having and building great relationships on the platform. And, you know, the Quick Start webinar is a great way to plug in and learn how to do that. What to say, how to say it, what documents are required and things like that, right? and what a person can do in their business. So anytime I teach a class, you guys are familiar with this. You've seen me post this every single time. I'm real big on disclaimers. Private money lending is great, right? You can make a bunch of money. A person can make a bunch of money lending. They can make a nice double digit rate of return, have their funds secured by an asset that's worth more than their loan amount, right? That's, that's the dream, right? But the reality is that there's a lot to this and things can go wrong. So I wouldn't recommend people just lending if you don't, if you can't afford to lose, right? And I also wouldn't recommend people just going out there and lending funds with not knowing like what questions to ask the person that you're lending to, or, you know, not knowing what documents you might want to have your attorney review and things like that, right? So is private money lending risky? Yeah, absolutely it is, right? But we're on here practicing, learning as best as we can. And one of the things that I'm really big on is making sure that before you go out and start having conversations, with potential lenders if you're a real estate investor before you go out and start start asking people if they want to do business with you go and surround yourself with the right licensed business professionals go and get the real estate attorney that understands what they're doing they can help draft your documents can do your title searches conduct your closings right go find the best of the best go find the best real estate agent that can help you analyze the market and get your houses sold quickly go find the best licensed and insured contractors that can you know make sure that your work's getting done properly and you know and and they're they're a pleasure to work with right the list goes on and on if you're buying rental property property management insurance agents i could go on and on and on but the idea here is we want to surround ourselves with each and every one of those types of people before we start going out and having conversations and if you're on this call and you're a potential lender right that's what we got to be asking hey tell me about your attorney tell me about who's going to be working on the houses tell me about yourself Right? We got to be interviewing them. Okay, so make sure you, the person that you're lending to has a great team in place as well. If this makes sense, say, "Oh yeah," in the chat. Let me know. Let me know that you're there. I had a, a friend of mine. She did our personal mortgage on the house that I live in. So she's a mortgage broker for my primary residence, right? And she reached out to me this week. Kind of cool, right? Just, just. Uh, and it, by the way, if you have any little victories, any little successes you want to us to celebrate please type it in the chat. I would love to celebrate your small wins that you have, right? A real small win. My mortgage broker reached out to me and she said, hey, you know, I'm interested in private money lending. Now she knows that we do this, right? She sees a Facebook post. She, you know, she, she sees my books. Like she, she helped under, get the deal underwritten for our primary residence, right? So she knows that we know what we're doing. But what, there's a learning lesson here. I, th I thought it was really cool. She had been a private money lender before, but the loan that she currently had out was six months past due. I'm just going to share this with you because the more you know, right? And the loan was six months past due and, and it was open communication. It wasn't malicious. It wasn't, you know, there wasn't too many red flags that, you know, and I think she had done business with this person in the past, but she had lent on a condo and the condo was in a flood zone which made the resale of the property, it has to be a cash buyer. So now they're sitting around, they're like, gosh, now we got to find the, the right person, a cash buyer, you know, the, and, and the market's smaller for that type of, of buyer, right? So just something, you know, I learned a little lesson. There. I was like, wow, you know, that's really good. I got to reiterate on my quick start webinar this week to make sure that if you are lending and it's in a condo, I know we used to have a condo in a, in a, in a community where they were concerned that there were too many investors and not enough homeowners. So like, like we couldn't get financing. Right. And so there's little things you got to look into 
and flood zone was was what was going on in this case here so if you're lending make sure you pull up the fema maps right before you go and buy a house you know check out the neighborhood do your scope of work my wife christy she always pulls up the the i think it's a fema website i think that's what it is if you search like flood zones in your county you should pop up with a map and just make sure see what's going on there which is pretty cool anyways a little lesson there you guys here we go quick start webinar welcome we do this webinar every single thursday one o'clock top of the hour my name is noah harris coach noah and we're going to be celebrating some wins today and and going through some examples you know, I had someone reach out to me at the end of the quick start web after the quick start webinar last week. And they were like, you know, asking about, hey, what do you got going on? Da, da, da. I'm going to share some of that with you guys. And I think there's some lessons in some of the case studies that I'm going to share with you. So keep this in mind. I'm sharing a case study with you. It's my case study. So nothing in real estate is ever going to go exactly like it has for me, for anyone else. It's deal, everything in real estate is deal specific, right? What makes real estate great? It's unique. So every deal is different. Every rehab cost is different. Every acquisition cost is different. So I'm going to share some some case studies with you to give you some ideas, get you brainstorming what a person could do with private money lending as a borrower or as a lender. If you have any questions, please let me know, which is awesome. All right, cool. Leah has a win. My first batch of private loans is coming to an end with a refi by my borrower. Score. Nice. I'm having, and I'm reinvesting on new loans with him. Perfect. He has an awesome team and I trust. Excellent. Love it. I love to see that. Love to see that. Leah, did you meet that person in Private Money Club? I'm just curious. Just curious. If, I know you're a premier member of Private Money Club. I'm just curious if you've met. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. Love it. Rafael, it's a small win here. We are getting ready to wholesale a thousand acres. What? Got the seller, got the buyer. Let's go. Rafael, congratulations, man. That is really cool. Love it. I love it. I love it. Hey, Terry, good to see you. All right, cool. Here we go, guys. If you're just logging in for the first time, let me know how many of you are on this call for the very first time. This is your first time attending a quick start webinar. You're like, what is going on? Let us know in the chat. Say I'm brand new. And for those of you that are brand new real quick, if you're like me, you like to know who you're learning from. I'm a real estate investor here in Columbia, South Carolina. I've been investing in real estate, my wife and I, for gosh, over 15 years. Uh, We're big believers in investing primarily where we live. We will occasionally go to North Carolina, Florida, Virginia, because we have ties and connections in those states. But most of our deals are within driving distance of where we live here in Columbia, South Carolina. My goal for every single person that I interact with and get to meet, whether it's on a webinar like this or in my accelerator course or at one of the live events with Private Money Club is to help you create a 100% track record, right? We're, we're going to do what we say we're going to do. Hey, I know this isn't mind blowing, but if you want to be a great borrower, if, if you want to be great at borrowing money, get great, become a great borrower. What does that mean? How you communicate, how the deals that you present, right? You follow through, you do, you're building credit, right? You build credit with your relationships, right? Because this is a relationship based business. On the next slide, a couple slides over, maybe I'm going to share with you the differences between using private money your own cash, traditional bank or hard money to fund your real estate deals. And what I love about this platform here with Private Money Club is that it's relationship based. You guys want to get great at this, start building relationships, right? And for Sierra, for Kelly and everyone else that said, hey, it's all good. If you're driving, just tune in, Kelly. It's all good for everyone that's on this call and you're brand new. Like, here's my advice to you. Stay plugged in, get connected, get educated. Uh, The more we see the names pop up, the more familiar you become within the community, the the likelier that you're going to be doing business with people, right? It's relationship based, which is a little bit different, which is awesome. All right, cool. A great group here. If you are new, I have developed great PML relationships following Noah's advice. Thank you, Raphael. That's awesome, man. Thank you. Cool. Here's the game plan. Every single Thursday, we start on time. We keep it real estate. So Private Money Club has lots of different types of opportunities. I'd say most of it's real estate. On this call here, um, I keep it. I keep it re- real estate. I keep it like residential real estate, small multifamily. We don't talk necessarily about funds or anything like that on this call. This is all about using real estate as collateral, using a mortgage, deed of trust, things of this nature. So if you're on this call and you're like, "Hey, I want to learn how to borrow private funds to go out and fix and flip a house, to buy a rental property, to buy an Airbnb," beautiful. You're in the right place. If you're on this call and you're like, "Hey, I just got my 
banking policy funded. I'm trying to be my own bank. I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to, you know, start lending my, my, to myself and then out. And I, I got to figure, I got to put the plan together. You're in the right place too. All right. And my man right there, you see Jose Harkin in the, in the chat box. Jose is with the private money club. Jose, you should change your name to say Jose PMC team. Maybe just so people can, can definitely like be able to spot you, but there's a link there. So if you have any questions at all about anything that private money club has going on, you can connect with Jose, hop on a call, and and they they'll they'll take great care of you, right? Private Money Club has a lot of different things that they do to help people get rocking and rolling in this business, right? If you have any questions, type them in the chat box, okay? If you have any questions, or no, excuse me, no, I'm sorry, I, I took way too many Sudafeds before, <laughs> a little under the weather, mixed up my words. If you have any questions, type them in the Q and A. If you want to participate want to celebrate a win, want to connect with someone, chat box, right? Because you'll see the chat box is going to continue to go pretty quick. I might not catch your question. PMC team is in the chat and all experience levels are welcome. We have people that are looking to do their first deal. And as you heard earlier, we got people on this call that are looking to raise $25 million, right? So it, no matter your experience level, we've got love for every single person in here, which is awesome, right? Cool. First time on the call, investing in Colorado. Let's do a deal together. Love it, love it, love it. I need to place 50,000 in California or Florida, two points, 12%. Okay, cool. Raymond, you sent that to me. If you want everyone to see that, change that to everyone so that everyone can see, which is, which is good. I'm sure there's lots of opportunities out there. I'm gonna share with you guys some opportunities here today and give you some examples of what's possible. Um, a lot of people feel as though they don't, it, 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 let me back up. It's interesting to me when I start talking to people, like a lot of people, folks know about private money lending. They know what private money lending is, they've heard of it, but for some reason they might still be using hard money lenders. Why is that? I don't know, maybe because it's easier to go to a company and ask for money, right? It's easier to go to a bank and ask for funding because that's what we've been taught, right? So it might, might seem a little, it's different, right? It's different. When you're going and asking a person for half a million dollars, asking a person for 100, 200, 300, 25 million, it's different, right? So I feel like sometimes investors, regardless of their experience level, if they've never been private money lenders before, they may be hesitant to jump ship. But once they do, they never look back, right? They never look back. And I think a lot of this has to do with the things that we work on on this call, which are credibility. So I'm going to, you know, one of the first things we talked about 10 minutes ago was the importance of surrounding yourself with a great team. Who's your attorney? Who's your agent? Who's your contractors, right? Those folks add credibility to you because they're the ones doing that work with you, right? So we're gonna work on these things. Clarity, how does it all work? What documents does a person use? You know, how do I say it? What do I say? How do I say it? Things like this. And I think if we have those first two, the confidence will come, right? The confidence will come. And this is a great community, you guys. For years, I used to, let me let me do a, a poll in the, here in, in the chat box. Let me do a poll real quick. Um, how many of you are currently in private money club? Say I'm in, in private money club. If you're in private money club, l let me know. If you're not yet, just say not yet. So we know. I, th I have a feeling most people are, right? If you're not in yet, just say not yet. It's all good, right? Not yet. Okay. Amy said not yet. Okay. Cool. Howard said not yet. All right. So for years prior to private money club, I've been a private money club member now for almost, almost two years, probably. I've been teaching the accelerator course for a year now. Prior to Private Money Club, I had to go to real estate investor association meetings. I had to go to family. I had to go to friends. I had to go to colleagues and parents of my kids' travel sports teams. And, you know, I was having conversations with a million different people trying to find good private money lenders. And so I really had to practice my elevator pitches and things like that. And lots of times folks didn't even know what private money lending was. You might have had these conversations before and people look at you like you got eight heads. Like, what are you talking about? And so it, it, you can find great people that way, but it's exhausting. So with Private Money Club, what's cool is the elevator pitch, while we practice it here today, we don't necessarily need an elevator pitch. Because in the private money club platform, people understand what it is and how it works. Does that make sense? So this is a great community you guys are tapping into. So make sure you take advantage of it. All right. So every single week we practice, we practice fundamentals. We, we do weekly lessons. And the most important thing is making moves. So we have some things coming up. 
that I'm going to mention now and I'm going to mention them at the end of the webinar as well. Here's my advice. And we call this the quick start webinar because Chris Noggle and Stephen Nagy, they want people to take action, right? They want people to get something out of this. So I, I said, you know what, let's create a make a move slide every single time so people can decide how to keep the momentum going. Like the last thing we want is for you to hop on a webinar, you take notes, listen in while you're driving and then just drop the ball or don't do anything or whatever, right? So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight different action steps that you could take. Pick, pick one, pick, pick two, right? Pick one you haven't done yet. So here's, here's my advice to you, everyone that's on this call. Number one, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna give you homework, right? I give everybody homework every single week. Number one, practice the fundamentals. We're gonna get into some education here in a minute. Practice the fundamentals, practice what we teach, right? Number two, if you're like, I don't even know where to start. I don't even know like what's, what's right for me. No, I would recommend hopping on a phone call with Jose and the team. You click the link, schedule an appointment that is good for you, a good time and day for you. And, and have them talk about what Private Money Club has to offer for you, right? That's the best way to map out a blueprint that's gonna work for you as an individual. Uh, at a bare minimum, I recommend attending next week's call. Keep the momentum going. We've done this 23 times. You just saw someone in the chat box say that with my education, with my help, they're, they, they're crushing it, right? Which is awesome. I love hearing stuff like that, right? Also, create your Private Money Club profile. Create your private money club profile. If you don't have a private money club profile yet, what are you doing? Like, so there's two options. There's a free option. You can go to privatemoneyclub.com. You can click on the link there that Jose made it super easy for you to click on. Go create a free profile if you're hopping on for the first time. Get your picture up there. Fill up, take the time to put a description in and poke around. When you're ready, Leapfrog, Premier Membership, well worth it. And, and then you have the ability to message people and some other features, right? But at the minimum, get the free profile if you don't have one already. Got it, say got it. All right, we have some important dates coming up. We haven't talked about some of these yet. August 12th, I teach in a course called the Accelerator Course. This is four intense weeks, of private money lending from the borrower and the lender's perspective, where I teach you what to say, how to say, how to present deals, share with you everything I got, Instead of this being you know, 60 minutes every Thursday, we dive in and, and I also give you uh, coaching and support thereafter. It's called the Accelerator Course. But we also have coming up the Mobile Home Take Action Challenge. My wife, Christy, teaches how to invest and lend on mobile homes. And you might be thinking, mobile homes, what are you talking about? Well, when we get into case studies today, I'm gonna share with you two things we got going on. And I have a feeling that you, you, I'm gonna open some eyes to the opportunity of, of mobile home investing if you don't already know. We also have a virtual event coming up, our Money School Essentials three-day event. That's going down August 23rd and 25th. If, you, if you're like, this sounds awesome, like where do I find this stuff? Click the link that Jose just posted there and uh, he'll make sure that you guys get set up with this. And then Money Tank event, Money Tank is our flagship event. It's a live event we do in Charlotte, North Carolina. It's going down November 8th and 9th. And so I would, I would definitely circle that. That's gonna be at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. So I, I think we're probably gonna be racing some race cars. How cool is it to be able to network with people in person? Like the platform's great, but live events, they're, they're, they're unbelievable, they're awesome. So that's what's going on, okay guys? So if you have any questions, you know, I, I, think, I, I think I wanna take this, that, or do, or learn more. Talk to Jose, he's in the chat. He'll be sure to hook you up with what you need, okay? Cool, I'm a mobile home park owner in Missouri. Nice, I'm interested in the mobile home action challenge. Need information, yeah. Flipping, Christine Stokes says I'm flipping mobile homes in North Carolina. Yeah, love it. All right, so it's not just me, all right? <laughs> not just me. All right, cool, that's awesome. All right, so here's here's uh, the, the big picture here, guys. So as you start talking to people, if you're a borrower, you're a real estate investor, and you're talking to someone you think might make a great private money lender, they might ask you, hey, why don't you go to a bank? They might ask you, hey, why don't you go to like a hard money lender? Isn't there like a, like a industry that does this type of lending for, for deals like you have? Like, why haven't you used these? And, you know, you, it's, it's important that you are able to communicate why you are willing as a real estate investor to pay 12%. It's important that we're able to communicate because people are going to think you're crazy, right? If I'm talking to someone and say, yeah, we, play, we pay high digit, double, data, double digit rate of return secured by real estate, 
Really? How much do you pay? I paid 12%. What? You're insane. My mortgage was six. You're, you're going to pay 12? Like if no one's ever been introduced to this concept before, right? It's good to be able to communicate and explain why and how we're able to pay higher rates of return, right? So traditional banks, I, I stole this slide from the, the Private Money Club certification course for the borrowers and lenders, right? Which is a cool thing. If you join Private Money Club, there's actually a free course you can take. And then when you pass the class, you get a little badge next to your name and your profile that shows that you took this course, right? Just another little layer of credibility, right? You're not just some, somebody logging in there and you're, you're taking it serious, right? Showing that you're educating yourself, right? So traditional banks, you know, they might have lower rates. They might have longer terms, like 20, 30 year terms, the, the, but it's going to be thorough checks, right? And much slower approval process. And, you know, lots of times traditional banks, if you're a real estate investor and you're buying a house that has foundation issues or boarded up windows, you know, the banks are going to be hesitant to lend on those types of properties, right? On the flip side of that, the other end of the spectrum is the hard money lenders. Now, hard money lending is great. If you don't have private money lending connections yet, I recommend working with hard money lenders as you build out your private money lender list, right? Does that, does that make sense? Start with hard money lenders don't not do real estate do real estate work with a hard money lender and then as you start building out your private money lender database and relationships boom you're off to the races right when i first got into real estate i worked a lot with hard money lenders and i might have like a second position private money lender or just use my own cash because the thing with hard money lenders is they're not going to give an investor all the funds that they need to do the deal right they're gonna they're gonna make sure that that if, if the property is worth a hundred, they're going to lend you 70,000, right? Or 80,000. And they might lend you the repair costs, but they're going to want to see that you cut the checks first and then they're going to reimburse you. So there's, you know, <clears throat> some checks and balances there. Use the hard money until you build up your private money, right? That's the way, to, that's the way to do it. All right, cool. I love it. You guys are networking in the chat. This is really awesome. I love to see this. I need to cert sort of, Certificate. Okay, cool. Jose got you. Jose's got you. Do you ever feel like you don't have control of your real estate business or your money? That's right. The big banks and the institutions, they're in control, right? I know you've felt that before. Private Money Club puts you back in the driver's seat. As members often tell us, it's a total game changer. Join the community of like-minded lenders and borrowers by going to privatemoneyclub.com and sign up. All right, cool. So you know, last week people were asking, Hey, what do you got going on? Tell us a little bit about, you know, if you could give any advice. And, and you know, one of the things that I've learned from being around this campfire for a little while is a lot of you guys, especially the lenders don't really know a whole lot about real estate flipping and real estate investing. Right? So you, as a lender, you love the idea. Where's my lenders at? If you're a lender type lender in the chat, see lots of times pe people, that become, you know, are in private money club and they're lenders, right? I, I met you guys, you got great jobs, you got great careers, you're financially smart, you're savvy, right? And you see the value of being able to put your money to work, make a double digit rate of return and have it secured by real estate. But what a lot of lenders don't know, and I think this is one of the things, this is how, you know, why we help you with a lot of these coaching calls and classes and things like that, is just, just to learn more about the business. Right. And some of the hurdles, some of the pitfalls. So I'm going to, I'm going to go through what I got going on right now in my little real estate investing business. And I'll share with you some lessons. Would that be good? Cause nothing's ever perfect, right? Nothing's ever perfect, but this is a, this is a mobile home here. It's a double wide. And this was a motivated seller. You're going to see a theme here that all the houses I'm about to share with you, it was a motivated seller. Okay. So if you're a lender, I would put on my questionnaire, my checklist, you know, to, I would ask them, Hey, how did you find out about this? Why is the seller selling at such a cheap price? Right. And see how they are finding their deals. Right. It can tell a lot about the investor. It can tell a lot about the company that you're lending with, right? How are they finding these deals? How are they getting the good deals? Is it even a good deal? Right. So we bought this mobile home from a title company. And right now it's, it's, we are contingent. And uh, it's under contract. We fixed it up. We sold it. We haven't sold it yet. It's under contract. We're just waiting. So this is a good lesson. This is a really good lesson. In lower price points, what you'll find is that end buyers for fix and flip type properties are going to usually try to go with FHA financing. 
right? That's what they can, that's what they're approved for. So a lot of the houses, I do a big range, but a lot of the houses that we flip here in Colombia, we focus on like affordable housing, first time home buyer price points, because we want the biggest, biggest pool of buyers, right? So if someone's going to be using FHA financing, there has to be a seasoning period of 90 days, right? So once, once it's been 90 days from the time that we bought it, we will draw up a new contract with the person that's buying this house from us. Right. And then we'll hopefully they've got all their information over to the broker and they can get it done as, as quickly as possible. Right. So just something to think about here. But this is a, this is a mobile home property The how it came. Why Chicago title sold it to us is because it was actually on the neighboring properties property line by about 10 feet. So whoever placed this mobile home here did a really bad job. They were probably drinking that day. And then so we. Our initial plan was to take the manufactured home and move it 10 feet to the right or however far we needed to move it. And it was, you know, it would have cost us a little, you know, good amount of money and it would have been some time and things like this. But what we decided was uh, the lot next door was vacant. So we contacted the owner of the lot next door and actually ended up combining parcels. So we never had to move the mobile home, which is kind of cool, right? So now this is a manufactured home. It's on over 1.5 acres. It's, it's the largest lot in the neighborhood. It's completely renovated and it, it flew off the market super fast, right? So, you know, mobile homes, why are we, you know, why are we talking about mobile homes? I think all in, we borrowed, I think the loan amount on this was one, 113. I think the loan amount was 113 and we'll, we'll, make, we'll make well over 50 grand on, on this manufactured home in i don't know less you know right around four to five months right is that pretty good don't don't sleep on the manufactured homes i'm telling you right jose right don't sleep on them all right cool why do some borrowers require an affiliate certificate and some do not i i don't know i don't know some borrowers require an affiliate certificate and some do not i don't know people need housing yeah people you know and that's the thing people need housing right now you guys and if you can if you can i'm telling you and i wish i should have taken some inside photos i just got that one there but we stage it we make it beautiful this is a really nice place all right on, on the other end of the spectrum with the manufactured homes right so this is the other end of the spectrum so this is a great deal and a great opportunity for someone who has a small amount that they want to lend why do we want to learn about mobile homes price points are smaller right? Which is super cool. So this one right here, we're buying, it's under contract for 18,000, right? And my, and the lot itself is probably 30, $40,000 in value with just the lot. And you got, you got the septic there, the water there. We got a couple different options here. We could pull this old mobile home off, probably turn around and sell it for 10 grand. And now we got 10 grand of our 18 grand back. And then we could go into like maybe a mobile home manufacturer or dealer and drop a brand new one there and maybe make like a 15% margin on it, right? That'd be, that'd be pretty nice. I think what we're going to do is clean it out and just turn around and make a small profit, turn around and sell it. Just a quick flip, right? We could sell on terms. Yeah, absolutely, Amy. Absolutely. And you're speaking to my wife. She's all about creating cash flow. And she's like, we could do the seller finance. We could do a lease option. Like, I want to, you know, create some cash flow for, for us and, and for our friend Terry, who I think is on this call actually, right? So she's trying. I like to get in and get out. I I like to get in and get out. She she maybe she's a big big picture thinker, and I, I might struggle a little bit with that. Yeah, she is. Yeah, mobile homes are where it's at. So cool. So those are two little things. Now, as a lender, I mean, how many of you in your infinite banking policies have eighteen grand? Right. You don't have to say it in the chat, but like, you know, that could be you. You could be shaking your head right now. So the opportunities are out there. Lots of times what's cool about Private Money Club is so many of you understand the infinite banking concept and practice those principles. But for a lot of folks, you might not start out with 100 grand, 200 grand, 300 grand or an IRA or whatever. You might just be saying, hey, look, I can do 500 bucks a month and I'm going to do a $10,000 dump in. And you've got this small amount of money and you're like, how can I put this to work? Something like this could be really valuable to you guys, right? Which is, which is pretty cool.
right? So mobile home challenge, I think that's coming up August. Jose, what are the dates? Is it August 18? It's, it's a Sunday. Yeah, so did the seller own? Here's what's cool. Marilyn, this is a great question. And I don't, I'm never going to answer something I don't know the answer to. All right, I will defer answers to my wife all day and every day when it comes to mobile homes. But she said, did the seller own the land? Yeah, so it came with the land. So it's the land and the property itself. Now, as a lender, in this situation here, if I were to use a private money lender to fund this deal here, they would have collateral, the land, the parcel, all that would be collateral. Now, I don't believe that the mobile home is detitled, right? So it's not considered real property. But when we go to resell it, if we were going to resell it like we did to this one, we would make sure that the mobile home is detitled. We'd have an engineer certificate make, showing that it's locked down to the ground, right? And any, anything else that the bank needs to see. But we're, this is an FHA buyer right here for this property right here. And depending on the age, the age has a lot to do with it. I have to ask Christy as well. But those are all the little details that are good to know and good to be able to pick up the phone and ask someone, hey, I'm about to lend some money on this. Is there anything I should know? Christy, Christy could be a great resource for you guys. Uh, August 23rd. All right, cool. August 23rd. Love it, love it, love it. All right, cool. So this is the other house. This is so private money, private money, right? I'm showing you guys kind of what's what's profitable or, or what definitely what's profitable, but what's possible with private funds, right? Because just like Marilyn said, hey, isn't lending going to be problematic? Yeah, there's no way I could go to a bank and get a loan to buy that. Right. And, and there's no way I could have gone to a bank and gotten a loan to buy a manufactured home that's 20 feet on someone else's property. Right. So the private money lending allows us to be able to come in and solve a lot of these problems. Right. But we, we got to make sure we got to make sure we have a plan. We know what we're doing. Right. All right. So this is this is a cabin. This is a cabin in Lake Lure, North Carolina. Has anyone ever been to Lake Lure? It's like my favorite place in the world. Dirty Dancing was filmed there. It's like when you think of North Carolina, like this is the city, the spot that you would think of, like the mountains and the water. And there's everywhere you turn, there's a there's a bear. You know, I haven't seen one yet, but I'm on the Facebook group and I'm a little concerned about the bears, to be honest with you. But this is a cabin. I'd like to sell it. My wife likes to wants to keep it. We're going to figure this out. Something that a lesson that we learned on this deal here is this was a shared well when we purchased the property, but nobody could tell us where it was shared from, like who, who, who we were sharing this well with. So it was a foreclosure. Okay. So for, this is a foreclosure. So motivated seller again, right? Bank, motivated seller, motivated seller here, tired landlord, motivated seller, motivated seller here, title company, right? So motivated, motivated, motivated. So we picked this up. This, I think we bought this for around 150 rehab. We borrowed $50,000 for the renovations, but we actually have about 25, 30 grand in, of our own cash in that as well. And it, it's probably, we could probably sell it for 375 when it, when it's done. It's real nice. It's at the bottom. It's not the top of the mountain, but here's the lesson, right? So if you, if you look at a lot of hard money lending companies, well, maybe I shouldn't use that example. Here's the problem. The, to drill the well is a six month waiting list. So we had a, we had a, we had an experience that here because this is in North Carolina. This is 90 minutes from my house. Drill, drilling a well in Lexington County, Richland County, South no, no big deal. But there, there's a six month delay to drill the well. So our project's taking a little bit longer because anything that we need, you know, we have all brand new plumbing. So in order to inspect the plumbing, you know, they want to have the water on which I guess makes sense, right? I think you can do it other ways, but they want to have the water. It makes sense, right? So we can't move forward in certain areas. Painting, it's just easier if you have water on site when you're painting and doing drywall and all that stuff, right? So should be August. So fingers crossed, August, we're getting the well done. But again, this is private money lending. I don't know if a hard money lender would have done this deal. I, I don't know. I, I know a traditional lender would not have done this deal. This this cabin needed a lot of work, right? Which is Which is which is why we got such a great deal on it. But thank you to my private money lenders, right? And I did meet this private money lender through Private Money Club, guys, through Private Money Club, and this one here, through Private Money Club, All right? So the folks are out there. We just got to start making relationships, attending events, right? Oh, by the way, tonight, if you are a premier member, you should have already gotten an email. Tonight is the monthly 
group coaching for premier members. So it's every third Thursday for two hours from six to eight. There's like a group it's, it's coaching, but it also kind of like a mastermind. So that's tonight. So don't forget. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Fern. All right, cool. Here's the next house here. This is a house downtown Columbia. Tired landlord inherited a property from his dad. A tenant wasn't paying and, and it's supposed to be out today actually. So we're hoping to get started on this here pretty soon. Private money lending, private money loan. We're borrowing $160,000 to do this deal. And just to kind of share, share with you, and I know some of you might be like, that's a low price point. Um, yeah, I got, I got a big one coming next slide, but just the power of private money lending versus hard money lending. If I were to use a hard money lender that they might charge, like there's one in our area, they charge three, 13% and three points interest. So if a point in, in hard money lending world is 1% of the loan. So like to get the ball rolling on top of their interest, they want to make a fee, right? 3% of the loan amount. So 3%, let me just run the numbers here. 3% of 160 is almost $5,000. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of 4,800 bucks. Right. And on this loan here, I think I'm paying 11 or 10. I think I'm paying 10. So if I were to pay, let's just say I held on to the money for an entire year and I was borrowing 160 times 0.13, 20. Yeah. I mean, I'm probably, I'm probably saving 15 grand by using private money as opposed to hard money. And that's just in like the fees and interest on this deal. Right. So shout out to my lenders. Love you guys. You guys want to get great at private money lending. Put your lenders on a pedestal, right? Put celebrate your lenders. As you can see here, this is actually a Facebook group. So when I here's a here's a good tip I'll give you. When you you got to figure out if you're lenders and borrowers prior to doing the deal together, figure out how you're going to communicate with one another. Is it a monthly email? Is it a biweekly email? Is it a are you going to upload Google uh, photos into Google? Are you going to you know how are you going to update them? Text message photos. So what we do is we actually create a Facebook group that's private. Nobody else can see it except for us and our lender. So if our lender is comfortable and likes Facebook, and these are little things I teach in the accelerator class, little, little, little nuggets like this. But if, if the lender is comfortable with Facebook, we get them in the group and then they can see the photos, they can see the progress. I don't have to like email. And I like to have access to that information because if I need to reference something, I pull it up right from my phone, which is cool. <clears throat> I think I got one more. Cool. So, all right, this is a private private money loan. Great example here. Bankruptcy, right? Motivated seller, tired. Land, what was the first one? Title company that screwed up. Tired landlord. Tired landlord. Foreclosure. This one here is a this is a bankruptcy. And I'll give you a, a really good bit of advice. A little little tip that every once in a while, it seems like it's once a year. Could be less. Could be more. But it seems like once a year. We buy a house and this is my, this is my strategy. So when, if you want to like look at houses, when you get off this call, you're all pumped up when you get on realtor.com or Zillow or something and you want to look, I like to look for houses that have like, what's the word I'm looking for? I like to look for houses where I can tell something is going on with the floor plan. So for instance, this house here is an 1800 square foot house, maybe a little bit bigger, 1850. And it sits on the lake. It's beautiful, but it's listed in the tax records as a two bedroom. So I'm like, how is a two bedroom at almost 1900 square feet? That's not normal for like our area. Right. And so as Christy and I kind of targeted this house, we kept our eye on it. We went, went, went with an agent. Go, it was listed on the MLS. Anybody could have done this deal. What we found was it was going through bankruptcy court. So it was move in ready, but the problem that the seller had is that they didn't know when they would be able to close. They didn't, you know, so for anyone that wanted to buy it, they would kind of be in limbo and the floor plan was wonky. So we're going to, we're coming in, we're completely changing the entire floor plan. We're doing like a big open floor plan. I, I can't even describe to you what we're doing. It was so choppy, but it's going to be absolutely gorgeous and beautiful. Uh, we bought this for 525. I think it was listed at 575. We offered 525. They took it. And this is going to be about $150,000 renovation. This was funded all with private money and by two lenders, two people. And 
we're hoping to sell it in the high eights, like 850, 875. We'll see. We'll see. Right. When it's all said and done, which is pretty cool. So small. So we, we, we you guys, we covered the whole spectrum. We, we talked about funding $18,000 trailers all the way up to, you know, lakefront bargain <laughs> shop, bargain renovation houses on this call, all used with private money lending, which is, which is pretty awesome. You know, and, and I love seeing in the chat, everybody's sharing your successes and, and things like that too. Private Money Club has been great to us, you guys, but you, it's up to you to take action. It's up to you to go out there and pick up the phone, to message people, to go to a live event where you can meet someone face to face, because this is a relationship business. At a bare minimum, I'd encourage everyone on this call, just, just get a Private Money Club profile started, get connected with Jose or one of see if there's a class, see if there's a course that, that you could take that could help you. You know, any, any little bit of education is going to add credibility and knowledge. Any, any little bit of coaching or support is going to add credibility. It's going to add knowledge, right? And your confidence is going to be, be going through the roof here, right? Uh, so we got 15 minutes. So real quick, let's get into what we practice. This is what we practice every single week. Private money loans. What is a private money loan? It's a loan secured by real estate, just like a bank just like a bank. So as you go out there and you start talking to folks or Nick Lucas, oh, okay, cool. Nick, Lu all right, great. Love it. Okay, cool. As you start talking to people and you're introducing the concept of what private money lending is to folks, how can you make it as relatable as possible where it's like, oh yeah, I get that. Because the thing with private lending is no one talks like, like a financial advisor isn't going to say, oh, you should take your money out of this Edward Jones account that I manage and go to be a private money lender. They're not going to tell anyone to do that, right? They're not making any money doing that, right? So it's up to us to kind of introduce this concept to folks outside of private money club, right? In private money club, everybody gets it outside of private money club. Then you got to work on this elevator pitch that we're practicing right now, right? Just like a bank. And then I would have your numbers figured out, right? Run your calculations, figure out what the, what you're going to pay. Because if someone's actually interested, they're like, oh, okay, tell me a little bit more. They're going to want to know money, right? Show me the money. So what? figure out what you pay. So we pay anywhere from 8 to 12% annualized interest. Each loan opportunity is unique. That's me, right? Maybe you pay more. Maybe you pay less. Maybe you don't give a range, right? In my accelerator class, I teach to give a range so that we can start negotiating, right? And it's fun. It's fun because the lenders are always trying to get more, right? You guys are always like, hey, I want, you know, 12%, I want 15, right? And, and then the borrowers, it's fun because we start them down at like nine, right? So how do you come to terms? How do you negotiate and create that win-win situation where everyone leaves happy, smiling, and laughing about it, right? That's one of the things that we teach. So I, lo I love it. So figure this out. Figure this out. At a minimum, now this is just elevator talk, okay? This isn't <clears throat> all you need. There's more to it than this, okay? But as, as you start having conversations with people, they're gonna fall in love with the money, right? Lenders, you fall in love with those double digits, right? But at the, but you don't wanna like get off the phone and then have like, is this too good to be true? Like, is this real? Like, is this a real thing? Like, so what we do is we, we take them up the next floor of the elevator and we talk about the documents that we provide. So just like a bank would want, just like when Jose bought his house, Jose went to the closing. If Jose got a mortgage, he had a big stack of papers. He signed a promissory note. He signed a mortgage, a deed of trust, personally guaranteed a loan, perhaps, and then made sure that the insurance was set up so that the bank was listed on the insurance. And we're doing the same thing, right? So when you start talking to people, be like, hey, it's just like a bank. You, you signed all these documents to buy the house that you live in right now, probably, right? We do the exact same thing, okay? So this is important. Anytime I've seen loans go sideways or things not work out, people want them to work out nine times out of 10, they usually didn't have all of these things here. All right. So if you're thinking about lending, make sure you got the promissory note, your con, you know, that's like the contract outlining the terms of the loan, you got your mortgage. And then the big thing is we want to make sure that the mortgage is recorded, right? The mortgage is recorded. So all the documents, and by the way, we're not preparing these documents ourselves. We're not going online and printing them off. We're having licensed attorneys draft them and review them. And that takes the pressure off of you. That makes sure everything's done correctly. 
right? Why wouldn't you do it that way, right? So everything is prepared and recorded by a licensed business professional. All right, make sure make sure you do that. And and and, and lots of times I, I was talking to someone too, and they weren't they were in second position. Maybe it was a first position, I'm, but they weren't they weren't sure if everything was getting recorded. It's really really important that the mortgage, the paperwork that gets recorded in the county, right? So that you actually have a lien on the property, right? It's public record, right? If, if you're lending funds and all you have is a promissory note, that could, that could be trouble. That could be trouble, all right? Just saying, not saying it's gonna, it's always bad, but the stories I've heard, that was the case, all right? All right you guys learning stuff? Has this been a good call? What do you think? Get great at these two lines, you guys. We're, if you're a lender and you wanted to help people transition from using their own cash or hard money lending, I would find people at my local real estate investor club or in my circle that are, if I, if I think they'd be a great person to lend my money to, right? I'd tell them, hey, look, where else could a real estate investor borrow all the money that they need to fund a real estate deal without having to go to a bank, right? If I'm a, if I'm a borrower and I'm talking to lenders, great little line. Hey, where else can a person put money to work at a great rate of return and have it secured by an asset that's worth much more? right? Just like a bank. So nail this down. These are some of the fundamentals. Okay. Practice, 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 schedule a call with Nick Lucas or with Jose. Click the link that he's been posting. They got lots of resources for you guys. This is a good community, good people, and uh, they'll take care of you. All right. Uh, This is my little process here. This is how I leverage the private money club. I just showed you deals that were funded by people who went through this same exact process. And so what I do, if I have an opportunity for someone, I'll post a deal. I'll post it in the forum as well. So there's two places that I posted it. I'll encourage people to go check out my website so they can read up on myself, my company, my wife, and our, you know, how we do business, things like that. I encourage them to schedule time on our calendar. They pick a day and time that works for them. And then we have a conversation. We start building the relationship and seeing if it'd be a good fit, right? But if you don't talk to people, it's never going to happen. Right, so get out there, get active, and uh, and make a move. I'm gonna leave this slide up here, but we're wrapping up. This is your make a move action slide. Like, just pick one or two things. If there's something you've already done, pick pick something else. Right. If you've done everything on here, the one thing I know for sure you haven't done is the money tank event. There's nobody on here that's done that one yet because it's coming up. It's November 8th and 9th. So circle on your calendar. I have a feeling this is gonna be awesome. Not too much info has come up, has leaked yet, but if you go and Google the address of where the event is, it, you can tell it's going to be a lot of fun. If you know a thing or two about Chris Noggle, he's got the need for speed, right? And so it's going to be a fun time, guys. So this has been a great call. I'm just going to check Q&A. If you have any questions, type them in the Q&A section. If you have any questions, type them in the Q&A section. I got like, I got like three minutes before I got to sign off. All right, cool. I'm going to be there. All right, good. Can't wait to see you, Kevin. All right, info on the bus tour. Oh, yeah, so the bus tour, I didn't even I didn't even talk about that. Okay, cool. So let's just real quick, I'll talk about this. Fern, are you signed up for the bus tour yet or are you wanting more information about it? So two real estate investors, part of the PMC family, Mike and Mike, Mike Puglisi and Mike Osborne, are they host, they have a really beautiful real estate investing business set up in Macon, Georgia. And so it's half the workshop is in Atlanta, Georgia. The other half is in Macon, Georgia. And they just teach you the ins and outs from A to Z of how, marketing to find deals, estimating repairs, selling properties. And then they actually take you out in the field and in, in there, they rent a bus, like a, like a nice little like Mercedes bus. And you go out and have a good time and tour the properties. And then they give you homework assignments, help you figure out how to estimate repairs. So it's a really cool class. It's going on in the Atlanta, Georgia area. And that is August 23rd, 24th, and 25th. Oh yeah, I, I get you. You're probably just like, hey, what about what about the what about the bus tour? Yeah, it's still going on. And I and I think for anyone that takes the bus tour with Mike and Mike, you're probably having a little FOMO, a fear of missing out on the virtual money school essentials event. They will give you the recordings to the virtual money school event at no charge. So if you're going to the bus tour, you also get the virtual money school essentials event recordings free of charge. Yeah, yeah, cool. We got you, we got you. That'll be really fun.
So, all right, cool. I love the takeaways. I love when AI recaps, recaps everything, makes it easy. Does the 23rd conflict with the mobile home class? That's a great question too. It would, it would, but we, we, we also record those as well. And so with the, with the mobile home class, the mobile home challenge course, what Christy does is she teaches Sunday nights in the evenings. And this is her thought process. I think, you know, being the mom, being the businesswoman that she is Sunday nights, she's like planning out her week, right? Is anybody else? Like that, I'm like a Monday morning type of person. Sunday night, she's 12 hours ahead of me. So she feels as if she's giving you assignments and different things to do or work on, Sunday night's great so you can plan your week. And then what she does is on Thursdays, I think around noontime or on lunchtime, they have an hour Q&A session. So it's like learning, education, assignments, Thursdays, hey, how did it go? What did you learn? Case studies and things like that. And everything is recorded, so. Yeah, Sunday, Sunday nights. All right, cool. All right, guys, I'm signing off. If you have any questions, hit up Jose. There's the link once more, or you can give him a call. Tell Jose and Nick I said hi, and, uh, and I will see you next Thursday. All right, take care, everybody. All right, bye.